The circuit breaker for the HD unit was pulled before starting work, just to protect yourself from the high voltage system. So this Lexus GS450H on a 2007 plate has had um, issues recently with overheating. The water pump was replaced about two years ago and it was found that the gasket from the non-OEM kit had given way and was allowing a lot of the water to escape which caused the car to overheat. But after the water pump and the gasket were replaced with an OEM version, um, still seemed to have coolant issues about two or three months later um, that were again intermittent and found split pipes and the like um, but it continued to keep rearing its head and then the car started to run rough and clatter as per the video um, and since continuing to try and inspect what's wrong also found I'll just take off the oil cap this is a fairly recent development but you see the, um, there's evidence there of oil and water starting to mix. There's the whole kind of mayonnaise effect. So we're going to start by getting access to the rocker covers, both here and here. I'm going to start that by moving this inlet, the airflow piping, and some of the electrical harnesses. So at this point, we've removed the throttle body, the coil packs and the plastic inlet that goes on the top. So on the UK passenger side you get an idea of how difficult it is even just to get to the rocker cover bolts. Um, if I try and light up just below the inverter coolant on this model, um, which is obviously only the 450 GS's, you see there's a, a very out of focus um, bolt there and that's one we've got to try and get to, but of course it's partially being blocked by the rocker cover itself by the fuel pipe and by the inverter coolant so getting to anything on the passenger side is really quite difficult. As you can see the wiring harness is still in place and um, most of it is disconnected but unfortunately there is a, a cable that goes down here one of the connectors this one here one of the connectors we've been able to get off because that goes next to the uh, high voltage line I'm lighting up there with the torch which hopefully you can see just about now sorry it's not very clear there we go um, let's just see if I can focus there we go um, but it also then goes off to another connector further back along the engine um, so it's virtually impossible to get hands anywhere near that to be able to disconnect it it looks like there are two different bolt sizes so the top of the rocker cover bolts there, like this one here, are 10 mils. But it looks like as we get further down into the rocker cover, or valve cover, as uh, some like to call it, we get into bigger bolts. Let me just see if I can zoom in for you. Yeah, so if we go down there, for example, that then turns into a 12 mil, And I suspect perhaps that's been done because the access to the bottom of that rocker cover is so difficult. This is removing the HV cables to get back better access to the bottom um, of the rocker cover. There's three bolts that hold each one on. Having now got the right hand rocker cover off, we're now going to look at taking off the thermostat housing and the water pump and the associated pipes to then get to the engine cam cover, which sits behind there. There are videos on how to do the water pump, um, which will probably give you more detail than I'm going to, but just wanted to highlight and try and put the torch down. We've got a retaining bolt there, another one under there, and then three down here. We've removed the water pump and gasket and the pulleys, um, and then moved up to the top and removed the uh, fuel pressure regulator which was sat in that hole. If you just have a look you can see it's kind of an oil and water mix thing going on here and starting to move the bolts um, around the rocker cover. Uh, the ones I've removed so far are 10s and then as you get to the back such as there they turn into 12s. 
in the process of trying to remove the radiator because A, I want to replace it anyway and B, it will give us more room to get down to the crank bolt. So we removed a selection of bolts along the top of here um, to loosen the panel. We've also disconnected it from a bolt there which goes through um, head side that way. And the same here which holds it to the condenser. Um, also taken out these, uh, there's two bolts there and two bolts there, so four bolts in an effort to try and loosen it from the bonnet catch, but that's not really proving very fruitful at the moment. We've got a loose-ish panel to sort of get to the radiator, but I haven't been able to pull it out just yet. The next stage is done after getting the radiator out, is the aircon compressor and condenser is still in, but the radiator is out was to remove the harmonic balancer pulley which sits on here. It can be difficult getting that off but using a uh, impact gun you manage to get it off without it trying to turn the engine. If you don't have an impact gun there are various tips and tricks you can try on the internet but it can be a bit of a bastard really. Um, then it was a matter of removing the bolts around the timing casing. So there was four bolts um, down the bottom there which came with the heads from beneath and then the various bolts around the edges of the casing uh, such as there and there for example there is a diagram that I'll post up as at the end of this piece then there's some tricky bolts and there are two I shall try and get in there sorry uh, how can I best see them so there are two in there um, and to get to them, it was a matter of removing the bolts that were holding the aircon pump there in. So there's two bolts at the bottom and one at the, and a nut at the top. And then once you've got that in, you can slide this. You probably see there that's actually in position so once you've loosened them off you can slide it back to then get to two bolts that are situated just in there where I'm lighting up at the moment which go into the side of the casing. There's also another bolt here and light that up as well. Where is it? Can you, hopefully you can just see it in the distance there. Uh, with my rubbish focusing. There, there we go. Um, and when you've undone that, that's on like a retainer so it continues to swivel, it doesn't come out. progress so far is uh, taking off the main chain and um, you can do that just by slack taking some of the slack out the tensioners and pushing the chain off from the crank spool at the bottom and then working it round. What you'll need to do is make sure that you have the flat sides here aligned so that you can get the chain out because otherwise it gets stuck. Then we've been working on getting the exhaust manifolds uh, released both sides 